the video. It got age restricted. I had to censor it. You watch it again for me, please. And it was kind of a vibe. The wind is blowing in her hair. The Christmas lights are shining off of her face. Our eyes are locked almost in the same way they were when we first met. It was time. I grab her hand. I lean in. Oh my God, ew, no. She jerks back. You're falling out of the tree that we were in. Do you know how chopped you gotta be to make a girl lean back like she's in the matrix bro i made this girl lean in an angle that only michael jackson himself could compete with if there's one thing about me i am a great planner slash coordinator like if i have a problem i will come up with a solution now when it comes to enacting said solution well like moist critical kevin hart or a little hoozy when he's not standing on his money I fall short. So boom, I'm 17 and I just moved to Austin, Texas from South Carolina. My brothers and I arrive and we're waiting at the terminal to get picked up by my mom. The bus terminal. Yeah, we moved from South Carolina to Austin, Texas by bus. Somebody tell me how he did it. I have to know. Hella stops, 24 hour commute, smelly bus. We got stranded in Dallas, but we made it out alive. Somebody I'm telling you all this because during that 24 hour time span, something happened to my brain. I vividly remember staring out the window and looking at a field and thinking, I'ma be homeless soon. I was a straight C 17 year old about to go into my senior year of high school with no job, no car, no money, and no idea what I wanted to do post high school. And by like hour four of that bus ride, I was in more existential dread than a 54 year old in a Corvette. I was having a midlife crisis at the age of 17. So that drove me, pun intended, to make my first step towards content creation. I made this Instagram account that I started to post my art on. Now I've always drawn, but when I made that art account, it really motivated me to improve my craft and develop actual skill in a cohesive style. And it showed because months after when I started the new school in Texas, my art teacher pulled me to the side telling me that she liked my style and said I should go to an after school art camp that kids from all over Austin would go to to learn from professional artists to improve their craft. Now I have a strict mom and I was very confident that she was going to pull the plug and dead this idea immediately but to my surprise she actually really liked the idea of me going to a camp and expressing myself so she ended up driving me there and it took place downtown at this museum. We pull up I get out of the car and I go into the building and in true African-American fashion I was late. So when I get into the class, the teacher is already in the middle of a lesson and stuff. So I'm walking in looking for a seat and I realize this class is just filled with women. Not only women, but fine artsy women. This, this. Okay, okay, my dog this better cook. sucks. Huh? I am very much afraid of women at this point in my life, bro. So, <laughs> so I walk down that aisle hitting the weather app calculator combination, making eye contact with no one. I sit down and I hear, all right, class, I'm gonna need you guys to pair up in groups of two so we can start the next drill. And hearing that in a class filled with people, no, not people, women. <laughs> hearing that in a class filled with women was petrifying to me. So everyone stands and starts pairing up and I'm just aimlessly walking around trying to find someone to be my partner. And I hear, hey, I look up and there's this girl facing me and waving. Oh my God, you're here? Is, is she talking to me? I have no clue who this girl is, but she is seemingly mad excited to see me. I'm thinking maybe she's like a classmate of mine that I've never met or something. I know you hear me. What are you doing here? Well, well, my teacher said I should pull up. Do you want to be my partner? Jessica, oh my God, is that you? Becky, I didn't know you were coming. <laughs> this girl was not talking to me. She was talking to someone behind me and I know both of them saw me in the middle waving like a dumbass, trying to start a conversation and they disregarded my whole existence, bro. That's <laughs> All I'm saying is they better chill with the disrespect because the last person to get rejected at an art camp started camps of his own. So after that happens, I'm, I'm about ready to call it quits and just dip. But I bump into this girl who I could tell was as nervous as me. And I'm pretty sure she could tell that I was nervous as well because we both sat down without a word, no hello or nothing and just partnered up. Just relieved we could find a partner without having to look anymore. So everyone pairs up and the instructor tells us that we have to draw our partner without looking at the paper and only looking at them. So we look at each other and make eye contact for the first time. And I can't lie, 
this girl's kind of fine. So we get to draw on each other and eventually we get the courage to start talking. I mean, staring into someone's soul for five minutes is a great icebreaker. It's kind of hard to not start a conversation after looking at someone for so long. Helen Keller could never. So we finished drawing each other. Hers was asked, by the way. And we spend the rest of the class like learning and stuff. But I'm not going to lie. Me and let's name this girl Ash. Me and Ash are just chatting the whole time, bro. We're talking about art, what we like, what school we go to, like all that. Fast forward to the end of class and Ash asked <laughs> the end of class and asked <laughs> Fast forward to the end of class and Ash asked to see my art. God damn. So I pull up my art Instagram on her phone and I follow myself. And I'm not gonna lie, that shit, that shit had me feeling like the smoothest to come out of South Carolina since Duke Dennis. Chop it up for a little bit more and then we go our separate ways. Now this art camp thing happened every Saturday. So during the next week, I'm hyped as hell waiting for the next Saturday to come so I could see Ash again. Now, around that time, I also made my YouTube account because at this point, I had been posting on my IG quite consistently. Like, I had around a thousand followers on IG and about a hundred subscribers on YouTube. And with that massive influx in fame, I started to take YouTube a little more seriously. But the problem was school, YouTube, and talking to a girl full time, I was stretched a little thin and something had to give. So unfortunately, I had to make the hard decision of cutting off school completely from my regimen. But because I stopped taking school seriously, my grades tanked, bro. Like I think I had a 37 in pre-cal, but I had a promising career and a baddie, so I could care less. So the Saturday for the camp comes along and I'm excited. I'm packing, I'm texting Ash and stuff like that. But then my mom knocks on my door and by knock, I mean, she knocked twice and then opened the door immediately. And she comes in on hot, bro. She's yelling. Her boyfriend comes in. He's yelling. How you got a 37 on calculus? Da, 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 da. I didn't raise you like this. They're going off. And I kind of just let them get it out without saying a word until I hear you're crazy. If you think I'm letting you go to this camp, bam, slams the door. And just like that, I, I was cooked. I mean, Ash lived 45 minutes away. Didn't go to the same school as me. I had no way to get to the camp and you can only text someone, but so much. So I didn't go to that class or the next one or the next one. And eventually a month and a half passed and the class ended. And during that time, I couldn't lock in on my grades to be able to go to the class again because YouTube was more important to me. So I'm thinking it's over until this one day I'm at school and I get a text. Hey, I'm gonna be going to the Christmas lights with my cousin tonight. I was wondering if you wanted to go with me. Now my pre-cal grade right now is either a 37 or a number two low for me to wanna openly admit on YouTube. So there was no way my mom was gonna let me go. But this was my chance to see Ash again and I was not gonna miss it. And once again, if I have a problem, I'm going to come up with a solution. So I spent the rest of that class period making a plan. So the Christmas lights were at 10, which was around the time my mom gets home from work. And I knew if I could turn off my bedroom light and leave before 10, my mom would think I'm asleep. So I could go to the lights and when I come home, I'll just go in through the back door because we had chickens. So if the back, if me opening the back door woke anyone up, I could just be like, yo, I was just checking on the chickens. So I had my way out and I had my way back. Now I just had to figure out transportation. Now the lights took place in North Austin, which is a $30 Uber there and back. Well, I mean, $60. And 17 year old me had absolutely no motion. I was damn sedentary. So $60 was in no way feasible, but I did have a way that I could get $45 illegally. I'll tell you how I did that in a different story. Just, just stay with me. So I go get the $45 really quickly and continue on with my plan. So I was going to have to spend $15 on a bus ticket there and then $30 on an Uber back. So I take the money that I got illegally. It was cash. This sounds sus as but I go to a CVS during my lunch break at the school. I sneak out, go to CVS, I'm, and I buy one of those prepaid Visa cards so I can pay for the Uber because you can't pay Ubers with cash. School ends, I go home, and the time for me to catch the bus hits. So I turn my bedroom light off and on some Disney Channel sh like put covers like under my sheet. <laughs> There's, there's no way that would have worked, but turn the light off and I start walking a mile to the bus stop. I get on the bus, show the bus driver my ticket. He lets me in. I get on the bus. I put in my headphones and I'm chilling, bro. The fact that I was able to come up with this plan in the span of six hours, I was proud of myself, bro. I can't lie. I'm like, <sighs> man. This plan really worked. I'm about to go see Ash again. Okay, my dog about to cook. And then I wake up, bro. Huh? I fell asleep on the bus, bro. It was like 10 p.m. And I pulled an all-nighter the night before to finish a video and post it. This girl gave me these plans last minute. I was tired. The bus stops at this bus stop terminal thing. I had absolutely no idea where I was. I, I, I decided to call it quits, bro. I checked the Uber app to see if I can get home. And I can't afford the Uber home. So I'm late for the date. But I, I just got to see it through at this point. I checked the bus route that. I'm on and it's a completely different one than the one to get to the destination that I was trying to get to. However, I was only off by like a half mile. If I ran down the highway, I could try to make the next stop. So I get off that bus and I book it, bro. Mind you, it's like 10 p.m. I am literally running on the highway to try to get to this next stop. So I make it to the stop and of course the bus is gone, bro. It's like 10:20. I'm in the middle of nowhere, latest 
Or Ash is texting me. It's, it's a mess. And I'm just standing there with three choices. I either try to run and catch up to an automobile on foot, call my mom and tell her I snuck out and ask her to pick me up and die, or take the L and ask Ash to drive 30 minutes from the lights to me to pick me up and then take me 30 minutes back to the lights. And unfortunately, I go with that choice. So I go into a Chinese restaurant on the side of the road and I wait for Ash and them to pick me up. Car pulls up, I hop in, and no one is feeling me, bro. That car, <laughs> that car is awkward as fuck. Bro, no one is saying anything. So after a long 30 minute drive, we finally make it to the Christmas lights. We get out and me and Ash are like walking around looking at all the lights and stuff. <laughs> in silence, no one, no one is saying anything. She was way too mad and I was way too embarrassed for the situation to not be awkward. Mind you, I've only met this girl once and that was like a month and a half ago. I've never met her outside of camp and her first impression of me was having to drive an hour to pick me up because I was too broke for an Uber and too stupid for a bus. So needless to say, it it's really not going well. After about 10 minutes of silence and walking, we end up stopping and I pull out my sketchbook and show her a drawing that I've been working on. And finally, after getting some common interest, we start chopping it up. And after a little while, I'm, I'm finally getting her to like laugh and stuff again. And it's finally going good. We start walking again. We finish touring the lights and we end up sitting on this tree branch. And it was kind of a vibe. The wind is blowing in her hair. The Christmas lights are shining off of her face. Our eyes are locked almost in the same way they were when we first met. It was time. I grab her hand. I lean in. Oh my God, ew, no. She jerks back, here falling out of the tree that we were in. Do you know how chopped you gotta be to make a girl lean back like she's in the matrix, bro? I made this girl lean in an angle that only Michael Jackson himself could compete with. She gets out of the tree and then she she's done, bro. She's like, I think I should go home. <laughs> she here runs to her cousin's car. She gets in the car and they're waiting for me to call my Uber back home. I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and my car declines <laughs> i guess the um what i think happened was the fee to buy the visa was more than i expected and the 15 dollars i spent on the bus ticket plus that left me with less than 30 dollars to get the uber back so i'm sitting there damn near mentally scarring this girl they had to drive an hour to pick me up i'm like yo you trying to <laughs> you trying to drive me home mind you I think we're like 45 minutes from my crib, bro. Flash says F it and calls me an Uber and I get in feeling absolutely defeated, bro. And needless to say, it, it did not work out after that. I'm in that, bro. Moral of the story. I don't even think I have one, bro. That shit was just tough.